Hello, and welcome to the DMR Tutorials. I'm your host, Dave Moore. It is my hope in this series to educate you on the tools and techniques that we use as builders to determine how it is that we're going to put together a race winning combination for you. There's a lot of misinformation and it is my hope to weed through all that and get you guys to the truth. So sit down and relax and let's explore the journey of two-stroke enthusiasm. Because one of the many services that I offer here at Dave Moore Racing is custom dome design and manufacturing, I need to get some information from you guys of your setup. And so I'm gonna show you how I go about getting that information when the motor is here in the shop, the tools that I use and the techniques and uh, hopes that you can supply me with the information and I can get you the correct dome. So, one of the first things that you're going to need is going to be a syringe that is in milliliters or cc's. This is going to be important for determining dome volume. You're going to need some sort of a stop or a height gauge. This is uh, pretty important for measuring when the piston is at top dead center. You're going to need a depth mic or depth gauge and a couple of precision ground blocks. Now these can be anything as long as they are exactly the same width as that will become important here in a moment. Then the important thing, you're gonna need your motor and it's gonna need to have a degree wheel on it. Now this is mounted onto my stand that I built out of an old set of cases. They're still good for something. And I'm going to be using for demonstration purposes one of the link cylinders I designed. This is going to be an 82 millimeter bore on a 72 millimeter stroke. So let me show you how this works. So I've dimmed the lighting and got a good zoom in on the exhaust port side of the cylinder. There's a small flashlight in the exhaust port right now and we're going to roll the piston down until we see the light crack the exhaust port. So let's just bring it down. And right there. You can see the light just cracking the exhaust port. Let me open it up a little bit more so you can see we want just right at the edge, right there. All right, we're now going to set our degree wheel to zero. Now with the piston at the top of the exhaust port and the degree wheel set on zero, we're going to roll the piston all the way down to bottom dead center and back up to just close the exhaust port. So we're going down, all the way to bottom dead center, and then back up into the point where we just close the light off on the exhaust port. And that is going to give this cylinder 100 and 92 degrees of exhaust port duration. I would like to thank the sponsors of the show, Mod Quad Racing and CP Industries. Mod Quad Racing is the finest manufacturer of aftermarket billet parts and their website is too large to list here. So go check them out. CP Industries is the largest manufacturer of ATV cylinders in the United States and they hold all the speed records in drag racing. Either one of these companies can help you out. If you contact them, let them know I sent you. All right, let's get to the tutorial. So we know what bore and stroke and exhaust port timing is. Now what we need to do is determine where the piston sets relative in the bore at top dead center, whether it sets below the deck, level with the deck or above the deck. Now deck level is pretty easy to determine. Above the deck is relatively easy to determine. It's below deck where things get a little bit on the tricky side. 
So you'll wanna use some sort of a stop or an indicator gauge to make sure that your piston is at top dead center. And as you can see here, I've got the indicator gauge on the stand set up and we are at top dead center. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and use my two gauge blocks here. I'll place them on, now I can tell this is below top dead center. That's the way I designed the cylinder. And we're gonna set those there, making sure that they don't, that they don't touch the top of the piston. And then we're gonna use our depth gauge. Come over here and put it on this, right like this. And we're going to run it down until it just touches on the edge of the piston. Now I know what the thickness is of these blocks. And so with a little math, This piston is sitting 60 thousandths under the deck. So we would call it 60 thousandths in the hole. Now, these are the three mechanical numbers that I need to determine what I'm going to do for a dome. But here's the other really important things that I, as a, as a builder, need to know to build a dome for you. Number one, I need to know what kind of racing you're doing. I need to know what kind of fuel you're going to run. And I need to know the average altitude at which you normally run. Now, all these things are really important to make sure that I give you the correct amount of CCs to give you the correct amount of cranking pressure for that altitude, okay? And a lot of people will alter just to doing it with, um, uh, cylinder pressure using a, a gauge and some people go using compression ratio but uh, either one of those is only half of the picture you need both of them to put them together let me give you an example if I set a motor up to be 200 pounds on the Oregon coast and I take it to Sand Mountain when I kick it out there it'll be 145 pounds now I have I have experienced this myself um, we also set up a motor this year for Clint Carpenter, um, here at my shop, it was 200 pounds. And when we got to little Sahara, Oklahoma, it was 175 pounds. So it is important to know where the motor is going to run at for the most part. That's why most of my engines that I have that I run around to different places, I have multiple domes for depending on where it is that I'm going. So these numbers and um, information is what I need to prepare you a dome. Now, there is one last step that is very helpful. And uh, let me grab one more tool and we'll get to that. Now, this is one other piece of information that I like to get if you have a couple of tools. The most important being is a high quality compression gauge that's Schrader valve is right at the spark plug thread end that threads into the dome. Meaning that the Schrader valve is here and it threads right into the dome. Not the Schrader valve being somewhere else in line or there being an adapter on here because anything from the Schrader valve down is going to be counted into the CCs, meaning that if that Schrader valve is up here or if it is up at the gauge, all of the CCs contained in the line are going to be calculated into how much compression that it's going to make. So it's important to have the correct gauge to do this and one that's in good working condition, okay? So if you take your gauge and put it onto the current dome that you have, hold the throttle wide open and kick it until the compression goes no higher then jot that number down. So let's say that's 175. Then take your dome, put a nice layer of grease around the outside, put it on a perfectly flat surface, and then fill it full of water or fluid of your choice, I use water, and measure the amount of cc's that it takes to fill that dome. Now you can fill to the top of the spark plug hole 
I fill to the bottom of the spark plug hole. However you do it, you have to let me know if you included the spark plug hole or did not. With the volume that is inside of this head and the number that you give from the compression tester, that gives me a very good idea of how much pressure that motor is making in the area that it's going to run at. And if you've tested it too, and you're like, okay, well, I have 175 pounds, I'd like 200 pounds um, where I'm testing at. This gives me one more piece of the puzzle so that I can make sure that I make a correct dome for you. So, with a few tools and a little bit of time and being careful to make sure your number's all right, you can then send me this information and I can go ahead and program and manufacture you a custom dome for your application. So if there's any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. And I hope to see you in the next video. I hope this was helpful for you. Have a good day.